So at this point, the trough is completely uniform from all the filing. And that is just a simple mechanism of just pushing down the trough completely. Um, you go along and you make sure that you do this till you get a relatively uniform thickness. Let's see if we can get the light to show that. Bring this down a little. There we go. So you want to look at the, the transparency inside the wax. So you can see a little bit of light coming through, creating this border. And um, that's really helpful when you bring it up to the camera. Um, you can see where the band ring is getting thinner and thicker. But uh, a couple of other defects that we have to take care of. There's a little chip right here. And there's a gouge from probably the pokey tool scraping across the surface. And then there's also a variance in thickness. So uh, it looks like this ring started out wedge-shaped. And so what we're going to do is we're going to chase back this top wedge um, just very quickly with uh, a very large file. So it's a pretty straightforward process of trying to hold your material so that the thin side is floating. And then just applying pressure to the remainder. And remember, once your wax gets this thin, it needs to be supported. We're just trying to get that extra thickness off. So we have something closer to the right thickness. So this is too thin, and this region's too thick, just between here and here, right? So along this edge, it's okay, and along this edge is okay. So we're just trying to hold it at an angle where we can support the ring to file it down. And that can be done numerous ways. This is the easiest way to make sure it's planar. This is the hardest one to get right the first try. So if you're not comfortable with that, you can always go back to the flat edge of your spoonie tool and just scrape that surface as well. And um, that brings me to the next way to fix some of these defects. Now, if you have the scraping tool, right, if you're using the scraping edge of your spoonie tool, um, one of the problems you're going to run into is as you chase down that edge, um, if you hit a defect like we have here, or um, this defect, you're going to need to take the outer surface down. And as you scrape the tool across, it's just going to emphasize a divot there. So that's when going back to your half round file and doing a light chamfer to smooth out that detail is a good idea. And a chamfer is just breaking the corners of the material. It's uh, used in blacksmithing so you don't have razor sharp edges. It's used in woodworking to actually prevent the splinters on, on lumber from making large timbers, structural timbers, holding the buildings up from catching fire because it's usually how, how those timbers would, would burst into flames is the splinters. And the chamfering also, of course, protected the people in the building from just getting stabbed by these large splinters that were on the, the far corners of, of timbers. So uh, breaking the edge is, is a very common thing to do when you're trying to soften the surface for general use, right? Uh, whether it's wood or wax or metal. And just remember, even though you're carving this in wax, the hope is at the end of this, you're going to cast it into um, metal. And you don't want these razor sharp edges gouging you right on the inside web space of your fingers, right? So when this goes on your hand, if there are sharp corners here, it's going to cause abrasion on either side of your fingers. And you want to make sure that that's not happening. So chamfer is a good way to do it. And it's also a really easy way to get rid of tiny blemishes on the surface. Because um, we just need to get it low profile enough to where if we decide to flame polish this edge, uh, there's a good radius there. And uh, the flame polishing can cut out the last of any of the blemishes from the process. So, take a look. You still see that gouge? It's okay to use your fingernail. Right? That works too. It's just a question of how hard do you need to apply pressure and how quickly can you remove material and then how comfortable are you with that mechanism of material removal. Right? 
I like using my thumbnail because then you can actually feel how much progress you're making. And you can see that our trough here is actually really deep. So I can take a little off the top. And I can take a little off that outer edge in a chamfer. And then if we come back with the lighter to flame polish it, you will never even know it's there. And then so this blemish as well, right here, let me grab the pokey tool to point. This blemish right here, I'm going to get that with my fingernail as well. But again, you could do the same thing with the half round file without any issue. So we just want to get everything relatively uniform. And now when we're trying to make these outer edges flat, that's when you want to switch to either the spoonie tool and scrape across the surface now that it's uniform. Or again, I like filing. Filing is a very quick way to get everything uniform. Um, and it's, you know, the file cuts on the push stroke, but it's gentle enough to where it's removing a bunch of tiny little pieces without applying too much pressure. And when you get this thin, um, I think the needle file or the flat file are good ways to work because you're not, you're not applying pressure downward to break your boundary. So I think we're at a good point to do some flame polishing because all of our blemishes are gone. Okay, so we've got our uniformly filed channel and we're going to do a light flame polish to just soften the radius of these corners of the channel and get ourselves a little more high gloss. And you just want to make sure before you do this you don't have any little fluffies left from your carving or your filing um, because they do weird stuff when they melt. So take the time to make sure that your wax is very, very clean before you start. And then if you have long hair, make sure that that's tied back. If um, for some reason you have other things on your table, just clear it because you don't want to drip hot wax on anything. And you also want to make sure that nothing is you know, going to catch fire. So our wax is really thin. We don't want to go too hot because the whole thing can just melt. But what we're going to do is just light the fire and then just wipe it across the surface. We're just looking for that high gloss sheen, okay? You don't want to go too fast. The thermal mass of wax is pretty high, so it's going to hold heat longer than you'd expect. So you don't want to overshoot that, that time frame and get the wax to the point where it's flowing too much and uh, you can't get it to stop flowing. You want the wax below, the thicker stuff, to cool it rapidly so it stays in position where you want it while still getting that high gloss characteristic. So you can see we got the perimeter to a high gloss and the interior band is still matte. And generally I like that aesthetic. Oftentimes I will um, sandblast this again and then just polish off the high spots. But with wear, um, the outer edges are always going to be polished. And if you want the interior to be polished, you can do that again with a fine sandpaper or you can try and get the fire to wick right up that channel as you go just lightly applying a little bit of heat. Okay. And so anywhere that you think you may have missed, you can hit with uh, a polishing grit or you know, try and hit it one more time with a lighter to get that surface glossy. But that's how you flame polish a trough. And at this point, you're ready to do whatever it is you want to do with the top of your band ring.